90 seconds before half time. The 10 men take the lead. And it's the former Middlesbrough defender who beats the former Manchester United goalkeeper. And the most resilient defence in the four divisions has been punctured here by Gary Pallister. The recent agony is over for Andy Cole. Three minutes to go. And Alec Ferguson, who's been on the edge of his seat really since Roy Keane let him down, has seen the players still out on the pitch come up with a splendid show of courage here, culminating in a second and one that believes clinching goal from Andy Cole. Giggs, what about that? Games after going through a drought and Armstrong brings White Hart Lane to life. Chip header, if there is such a thing. Caught Shaka Hislop completely flat-footed. And quick thinking by Armstrong gives Tottenham Hotspur the lead in the 21st minute. A classic from the French master. Two minutes into the second half. And Newcastle are back with the back. his own little creation he got something out of nothing at all determination a part of it skill of the part and a blast finishing it off 46 minutes 55 you know going out onto that left wing where he's more comfortable having an immediate impact and it's 1-1 one, one. too hot for two defenders to handle has had to find the camera, doesn't he? The fixture miss can be unkind at times, as Manchester City will surely testify. Four days after losing 4-0 to Liverpool in the League Cup, Alan Ball's team were back at Anfield and trailing after only three minutes. Ian Rush collecting his first Premier League goal of the season after Ike Immel could only parry out a shot from Jason McAteer. Two minutes later, it was 2-0 to Liverpool. Jamie Redknapp the scorer this time with a shot that deflected cruelly past Immel. Several near misses, but no more goals in the first half. But then a strike of exceptional quality increased Liverpool's advantage early in the second. Service by Mark Wright, support play. Robbie Fowler's finish had the Anfield crowd in raptures. City haven't won a league game since April. They were clearly heading for another heavy defeat as Liverpool's dominance soon produced a fourth goal. This time the header from Neil Rudder, a first-half substitute for the injured John Barnes. On the hour, it was five and two for Fowler. Another clinical finish from the England under-21 star, this time from McAteer's pass. Rush then matched Fowler with his second four minutes later. Immel saved well from Redknapp, but there was Rush to follow up. Liverpool's unbeaten run stretches now to 12 outings with this majestic display and one that certainly satisfied manager Roy Evans. Yeah, you've got to be pleased. Um, to be anybody 6-0 is, is an achievement. Um, but off the back of uh, Wednesday's game, 4-0, uh, we always worry about a bit of complacency. Um, but fortunately, we scored early on and uh, then out of the second and it was a mountain for them to climb after that. Allen emerged as a young striker of rich potential last season, but with Danny Di Keo taking centre stage, he had to wait until Saturday before returning to the side with Di Keo out through a mystery virus. Rangers were hoping to avoid losing for the third time in a row in the Premier, and they had Mark Crossley at full stretch for this save. 
Athletic defiance to deny Andy Impey a goal. But then just after the break, a goal for Forrest and an embarrassing moment for Jurgen Sommer. Jason Lee's header looked to have been well covered by Rangers goalkeeper, but somehow the American allowed the ball to squeeze underneath him. Rangers, with 39-year-old Ray Wilkins prompting relentlessly from midfield, strove gainfully for an equaliser. Simon Barker twice thought he'd scored. First this shot against the crossbar, then with Crossley beaten again, he scraped the post after a miskick from Stuart Pearce. Christ, though, were always a danger on the break, especially Dutchman Brian Roy. Summer atoning here for his earlier misdemeanor with a splendid save. Rangers' perseverance was finally rewarded nine minutes from the end. Trevor Sinclair's brave header from Simon Osborne's cross will have earned the appreciation of the watching England coach, Terry Venables. 1-1 the final score, Forrest's unbeaten Premier League run now extends to 24. <laughs> Carl Tyler is hoping his career is picking up again now that he's moved to Aston Villa from Nottingham Forest. With Paul McGrath out injured, he came straight into the Villa team for the home game against Everton. Villa were mainly employed containing Everton in the first half and came closest to scoring with their most promising attack. A Dwight York shot that putted against the post. York is having a splendid season for Aston Villa and it was he who indeed won the match for them in the second half as Villa finally conjured up the goal they just about deserved. York claiming his seventh of the season from Mark Draper's cross with just 13 minutes to go. Bit of the winners by a goal to nil. The signing of Richard Johnson from Oldham was Howard Wilkinson's response this week to Leeds United's recent defensive failings. His debut, though, was likely to be a demanding one, with Dion Dublin back in the Coventry side after injury. Indeed, it took the former Manchester United striker only six minutes to make an impact, as Coventry produced their first goal in four league outings. But with just over five minutes to half-time, Leeds hauled themselves level. Their captain, Gary McAllister, with a shot that deflected in off defender David Boost. Before Coventry could reorganise themselves defensively, McAllister struck again. After a handling offence from Kevin Richardson, McAllister beat John Phelan again with an excellent free kick. Leeds had won four of the last five home games against Coventry, and they made certain of extending that spell when McAllister, who hadn't scored in the Premier this season until this match, completed his first hat-trick for the club in the last few minutes. His chance coming when Leeds won a controversial penalty for an apparent offence by Marcus Hall. Was it his hand, though, or his thigh that made contact with the ball? McAllister's kick was decisive, and Coventry were left mourning the loss of another three points. Leeds three, Coventry one. Bohinen, whose arrival at Ewood Park has added a new dimension to the team's attacking options, testing here the reflexes of goalkeeper Dimitri Curry. With Chelsea struggling to make any real impression, Rovers were deservedly ahead just before half-time. Tim Sherwood, the scorer, with this deflected shot, after good work from David Batting and Bohinen. Rovers second had Chelsea searching in vain for a linesman's flag. Alan Shearer was ruled onside as he finished chillingly from Tim Sherwood's long pass. Shearer has now scored 15 of Rovers' 24 goals this season. Chelsea haven't won this fixture for 19 years. And survival hopes in this one ended on 57 minutes when Mike Newell devoured the chance laid on for him by Shearer. 3-0 the final score. Blackburn's confidence appears to be growing. In the West Ham squad at Hillsborough, in the centre of the picture here, was former Sheffield Wednesday player John Harkes. The American, on loan from Derby until the end of the season, had to settle there for a place on the substitutes bench. Defeated Southampton in the League Cup in midweek brought an end to West Ham's recent run of success. And they rode their luck in the first half. This was Mark Pembridge scoring what seemed a simple chance. Former England winger Chris Wattle was soon cursing his ill fortune too, when again the Woodwork intervened to rescue West Ham. But five minutes from half-time, the London side broke out to score. Their thrust on the counter-attack, rewarded through Ian Dowie's goal from a pass by Robbie Slater. 
Mark de Greiser, returning from injury, came on as a substitute for Wednesday, but couldn't inspire a revival. Indeed, it was West Ham who closest to another goal. Dowie's header, this time rebounding off the crossbar. West Ham the winners. Wednesday have won only once at home in the league this season. Experience is invaluable at top level, and Southampton are confident their investment in Barry Venison from Galatasaray can improve their prospects of retaining their Premier League place. His new club were off to an excellent start against Wimbledon. Only eight minutes played when Gordon Watson's cross was turned in by Neil Shipley. This for the former Chelsea striker's first league goal of the season. That was the high spot, though, of a disjointed first half that reflected the current plight of the two teams. But there was a moment of savour in the second when 18-year-old Jason Newell plundered a superb equaliser soon after the hour mark. Newell's score of 50 goals for the club's youth team last year was only playing because of the Don's extensive injury list, but is clearly an outstanding prospect. On 74 minutes, though, Southampton were in front again. Matthew Letizier's first really significant contribution of the game paving the way for Schiffley's second. Another unhappy afternoon then for Wimbledon, their misery compounded by the dismissal of defender Scott Fitzgerald six minutes from time. He'd been booked earlier for fouling Shipley, now he was sent, then carried off, following his elbowing of Watson. A very welcome win for Southampton, their first away from home in the Premier this season. So checking through.